My name is Stephanie Rogers and I am the Artistic and Executive Director of the Anderson Center at Tower View in Red Wing. And today I'm happy to be talking with Don Zero Erickson, a Red Wing-based textile artist. Don, could you introduce yourself, tell our listeners a little bit about your medium and how long you've been an artist? I um, work mostly with textiles, although I do um, textile design and um, fine art. And textile design is done basically all on paper. Lately, I've just been working with fine art textiles. And um, I started out, um, I think since I was very small, maybe five, I knew I wanted to be an artist. Before we go any further, do you want to talk a little bit about the fabulous imagery that's behind you right now? <laughs> um, well, I just i this week i had three big deadlines um of course you would think with all this extra time i wouldn't be working up until the last minute but i was um <laughs> so this one um was uh i sent off for a very close um um museum in hastings and they had um, let's see, it's called um, Historic, let me see, I think I even have the paper here. So, um, Modern Interpretations of Historic Designs. So I don't know how many people know this, but in Hastings at the Leduc um, Historic Museum, that was a house um, that had, back in the um, 1800s, um, it was, um, there were two women, two sisters that lived there who had a needlework company. And what it was, was they um, designed embroidery patterns, had it, had people embroidery them in the town and cottage industry and sold them all over the world. And so they still have all these patterns at the history center there. And so we, um, every so many years they have a call a challenge and you use the patterns that they give you and interpret them however you want so that's what this one was for and um so that's what i did i did that this week <laughs> that's really cool and i am excited to learn more about that museum and that history i had no idea i know most people know nothing about it they drive by there and back and forth and yeah it was pretty it's it's pretty nice to know that there was that textile industry here great so. i'm definitely going to research and learn <laughs> more about that so to back up just a little bit you said that you have been wanting to be an artist and doing artistic things as mm -hmm. early as five how did you get from being a creative kid at five to someone who's working as a professional textile artist and designer today. Mm -hmm. Always making things when I was little to then knowing that for sure I wanted to go to um, an art school or to college as it, for art. Um, so um, I went to Rhode Island School of Design and right after that I went to work in New York at a textile company. And after living there for a while, I decided that I didn't want to live in a great big city. <laughs> and so I moved to, um, to St. Paul actually, because my father grew up in St. Paul and I, he just was a great storyteller. And I thought that would be the place to go. And I'd really never lived anywhere for more than a few years. So I thought I'd live here a few years. And after living in Minneapolis, um, I wasn't that crazy about Minneapolis at the time. Um, and so I was gonna go back to New York and my aunt said, well, what is it that you liked about New York that you don't, you're not finding here? And it was basically um, my neighborhood in New York. And so a small town was kind of the same. <laughs> so I moved to Red Wing out of the blue. <laughs> How many years ago was that? Can I ask? Oh, uh, it was in 85, 86. 
so a long time ago. And I figured I'd be here a couple years. And um, But we have a great library and it's easy to live here. And we're closer to the airport here than when I lived in New York. So <laughs> it works out good. Yeah. And it, it some of your textiles and your designs seem like they take inspiration from the natural world. Is living in Red Wing contributing um, to uh, that aspect of your work? For sure, it makes it easier to be outside and wandering around. Um, but the majority of my work is based on actually traveling places mm -hmm. that I've traveled. So, um, and I travel, uh, I used to travel that I was gone more than I was here. Um, now I'm here more than I'm gone, but I'm still gone quite a bit. So I'd love it if you could talk me and some of the viewers watching this through that inspiration. So you're traveling and what is it, what's an example of something that you've seen that then, um, mm -hmm. how do you take something that you see in person during your travels and what kind of translations or interpretations are you doing to come to the final, um, the final work? Uh, so I think more than, okay, so a lot of it is feel and color, which seems kind of uh, vague, but um, also cultural aspects. So let me think of a particular piece. Um, I just think of one that, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of it now, but um, I went to the Middle East a few years ago and um, just the, you know, what I saw there and how um, women were treated differently than men and um, what um, kind of the mystery of what's under those black covered head to toe. <laughs> um, and um, just the um, kind of the decoration that I saw there and how, um, you know, the pa I can see patterns anywhere. So that, um, that was easy to interpret, I guess. Um, I love being in Japan, and so anything about Japan will intrigue me. And I can make a piece about one tiny little something, so, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of reinterpreting the questions that I had written, but That's fine. is there anything else you want to say about recurring themes or ideas in your work? Um, actually, right now, I'm working um, in two different, media inside textiles. Um, I do a very fine um, stitching with silk organza. And then I also do what this is, is large scale um, cotton, printed cotton. So both fabrics, um, both silk screen printing and dyeing a fabric. Um, and, um, but the scale is different. I just did a piece um, that was for a poetry, the poetry um, art exchange. And I was lucky enough to um, interpret, or I don't know if that's what you call it, but um, I used Joyce Suppen's poem, The Cup. And um, so actually that was a fairly big piece. I had to shorten it because we had to, I had to photograph it myself, <laughs> which is not usually how I do my work. <laughs> and um, so, uh, but that was long and narrow. And then the, uh, another, so that was, I used the silk organza for that because it just seemed like the right um, transparency and the right detail for that poem. Uh, so it kind of depends on what I'm working, what design I'm doing will dictate which direction I go. Um, and then just uh, 
you know, what I want to do at the time also. But they're both, I mean, they're both quite similar, but the way that I have to do them is really quite different. Um, but it's all a lot of planning. <laughs> There's not a lot of spontaneity in my work. Um, in the actual, you know, I have to have a list of, I start here, this is what I do. With silk screening, there's a lot of going backwards because of the layers. So, um, but then there was a, a um, show, a competition that somebody told me about that I just sent out last night. And it's, it was called um, Scraps, Leftovers, and Inspiring Bits and Pieces. And somebody saw it and send it to me because they thought that it would be perfect for me, which it was because I just finished that piece for the cup. And um, so I was able to pick up my floor, <laughs> what was off the floor and make something out of that. So I actually made two little pieces. Um, so I decided that since I had done the piece about um, Joyce's book that I would, or her poem, I would wrap her piece in, her books in a piece of fabric from those leftovers. So that was one, and then I made another, and I can actually send you slides from this too, or pictures from this. I wrapped a rock, because the show was called Delicate. I mean, that was the title, so um, just sort of fun things. That's actually a little more, you know, I can be a little more free with that because I'm actually working with what's been cut off the edges. And so that was kind of- Those yeah. are beautiful. And I love yeah. seeing, yeah, seeing your work held up to the camera. My friends and I yeah. doing studio <laughs> visits with each other that way. Look at what I'm working on. Look what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, what I'm hearing you talk about is a very, what I would call a very process oriented mm -hmm. way of working the steps that you're describing. I've done a little bit of fabric design and patterning myself, um, and I've enjoyed the problem solving aspect. It's like this puzzle mm -hmm. that I create and then solve new every time to try to get the yeah. repeats to work together in an interesting way that's not too obvious. So I'm curious, are you doing repeats in your silk screen um, designs? Yeah, it, well, they're, um, it's what, I would call croaky format. So there's not an exact repeat in these, um, but it could easily be put into repeat, you know, but I don't have to repeat this because I'm doing it on a big table and I just, I can see a repeat right away. Um, I mean, it's, for me, it's really easy to put things in repeat. <laughs> um, so I just do it random. I mean, it's random, but pretty close to repeat. Sure, and even as I'm looking at the image behind you, there's repeated elements, but they're, the closer yeah. I look, the more I see that they're in different relationship to the other elements in the right. work. Yeah. Great. So I, don't, I mean, I'm only, I did, uh, this was maybe about, um, it's nine feet, in the end, but I probably did a couple extra yards. So that's not very much to do. Right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so you've talked to, we've covered what you've been working on. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you've just wrapped up some projects <laughs> on some tight deadlines. <laughs> do you have something lined up for what you're going to work on next? Oh yeah, I'm already, I already started um, another piece for, um, a show that's um, Norway House. And as far as I the this one actually, I don't know if it's gonna be shown. Um, I, you know, so many people are on, or I've been furloughed, so you can't get, you can't talk to really people. And so if it's their job to take care of this exhibition, maybe I'm not hearing anything. So I just decided I would go ahead and do it. I may be the only person who's, <laughs> my work in but it's fine doesn't matter um the other one they are going to do something it's a little bit later in the summer so um I have that one to do um next and I have a couple shows coming up in the next year so I have to get ready for those as well so there's always something <laughs>
Yeah, absolutely. Plus, I don't have to have a show to do work. Um, I don't need that. I don't need a deadline, but it just happened that a whole bunch of them came here right away at once. As you said, just the fact that you're not sure if maybe a show is going to happen, has the coronavirus impacted your work at all? Not my work at all. Um, I mean, I'm person for myself, this is made for me. <laughs> I, I work at home, so that's not a problem. Um, I miss going to the library and the Y, but other than that, I don't really... I mean, it's not really affected me at all. I'm pretty lucky in that way. Um, I always ask for, in my head, I mean, I ask the whatever, if I just had one more day for this deadline or I had one more day for that, but I've realized that it's not gonna make any difference <laughs> considering I just worked up until I had two hours to get my work in for the last deadline. <laughs> so I guess it's not really gonna make much difference. I'm going to still work up until the deadline. <laughs> I also find deadlines to be um, a motivating factor. You could keep yeah. working on something indefinitely. Until that last minute, you have to send it out. Right. I mean, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I only had to have one piece for something, and I decided to make a couple so I'd have a choice. So I guess that's how it works. Sure. That yeah. makes total sense. So uh, really, it's not, it doesn't make much difference to me that we're, staying at home. Do you have advice you would give to an aspiring artist or someone who's interested in working as a textile artist or a textile designer? Work all the time. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of it. <laughs> and then do you have long-term artistic goals? You've achieved so much, but is there anything you're still working towards or, or trying to accomplish in your art or in your career? I mean, I think you're always working because I only was able to put this piece up because it's so new, but in a, about a week, I will have so much criticism for that piece that it will be really hard for me to look at it. Um, so I think you're always just working for that next, whatever the next thing is going to be. Um, and as far as long-term goals, um, I guess just keep working. Do you um, think you keep getting better at it? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I mean, I would hope that I do. The way you're talking about criticism makes me think that you maybe are somebody who learns something from every, every time you solve yeah. the problem, a new time <laughs> you're learning something and every next and piece incorporates what you what you learned into it. Yeah, and you wanna, uh, and for me it's, um, you know, oh, I wish I had done this. So then I can do that the next time. So I think that's it, whatever you, I think you have to learn. You know, I think I would be really stuck if I got attached to something that I did in the past. <laughs> I think it would be harder to move on. Great. It's so interesting, and I'm going to look forward to seeing those upcoming shows. So That's send us information on those, <laughs> and we can plug them um, when we're all able to go out to museums and galleries again. It will yeah. happen. Um, so again, thank you, Don Zero Erickson, for talking with me today. You've been a great part of the arts community in Red Wing, and we've been fortunate to show your work at the Anderson Center. You were a staff member at the Anderson Center for a while, um, so I appreciate your time. Great, all right, thank you. This video is part of the artistic response team of Red Wing, a collaboration between ArtReach, the Anderson Center, Red Wing Arts, Sheldon Theater, and Universal Music Center. <laughs>